Hey guys, welcome back. This video, I wanted to talk about nested if statements. And I'm going to be building off of the code we had from a previous video where we talked about else if statements. And um, if you didn't watch that video or you're just jumping in because you need to know about nested ifs, that's okay, it's nothing too crazy. Basically what happens is we ask a user to select a menu item. And I could just show you what happens when we run this code. So, oops, gosh, there we go. Okay, and then we run it. You choose a menu item and depending on what you click, it prints out a different statement. And let's just go with four, for example. It says exiting. Well, what I wanna do is I want to basically create a system that saves our changes. And I'm not actually going to save our changes in like a, a file or a database. That is something you could do if you so wanted to. Uh, it's not too crazy complicated. You could just write down the the state of your program in a, in a text file. And when you open your, your program back up, you could read from that text file. But I'm going to simulate that and what I need to do is basically say, oh, you hit the exit, so do you wanna save your changes? If they say yes, I'm just gonna print F, saving changes. If they say no, then I'm just gonna say, well, fine, forget you, and then I'm gonna exit the program. And this will basically enable us to practice our nested if statements, because you see, we have an if statement, and we only want to execute this new saving if statement if we're in this else statement, or uh, sorry, this else if statement. So we're gonna have an if inside of an if. And honestly, it's not too crazy. It just, if you just kind of pretend you're not in an if statement right now, just you're just by itself, then you just write everything as if it's normal. So we say, we first ask them if they wanna save. My cold hands are acting up. And uh, what we do is then we, sorry, I keep saying, uh, I hate that. Man, I watch videos and people say, uh, and I'm like, gosh, that's so annoying. <laughs> We're gonna make a variable. Mm. I'm just call it Q for quit. And, and it's gonna be a character actually, so Q. And we're gonna we're gonna scan from the input. It's gonna be type C. And another thing in this video, we're actually going to be talking about an issue with the uh, the input stream, which we talked about in the previous video. And we're gonna get some practice fixing that. So hopefully that'll be helpful for you guys who need to know more about input and output. So we're gonna take this character and we're going to store it in Q. And what now? We're going to basically uh, condition on that. I'm gonna use an else if because I wanna have a, an interesting else statement just to show that you can do all three of these inside of, a, inside of any other code block. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to compare the value of Q to what would be considered yes, which would be a Y or if Q is equal to a lowercase y. Because if you remember from the ASCII table, it has uppercase characters and lowercase characters. So these are two distinct characters. So you might, you might wanna say yes or no, but sometimes people just will put the lowercase version and that'll, that'll be all they do. <laughs> In this situation, we're going to print Saving changes. Else if, let's say Q is equal to capital N or Q is equal to lowercase n. This situation, we're just gonna say, fine, whatever. And lastly, if they put something else in, you can basically assume they're trying to be a hacker. So we're just gonna call them out. Hacksing detected, self-destructing in five, four, three, two, four. I know, I'm so childish. 
All right, let's give this a go and see if, if we got it working right. We want to quit. Okay, what is going on? It's just spitting all this junk out. Oh man, let's try to figure what out what is going on here. Exiting, do you want to save? Yes or no? And then it just barfs everything. Well, this has to do with that input stream issue. And in order to fix this, because if you scroll up, you can see we do a scan F here, and then we do another scan F down here. Well, the way the input stream works is like, let's say I put in the value 23, and I'm just commenting it out, uh, 23, and then I press enter. Well, that's going to put a new line. And then I try to get a new, another character. Well, the variable is just going to grab this new line. And that's going to just really mess up our program. So what we need to do is we need to get rid of that new line by getting a new car. <laughs> all right. So to do that, we just say get car. And that's all we got to do. Oh, and uh, the location where you put it is actually pretty important. You definitely want to put it before the second scanning. So we can put it right here. Now let's try and see if this works. Four, exiting. Do you want to save? Let's try yes. Saving changes. And lastly, I'm going to uh, make this a little prettier. There we go. Now let's try it again with no. Fine, whatever. And lastly, let's try it with something else. Hacking detected, self-destructing, boom. There you go. That is how you do nested if statements and also clear out the input stream uh, when you are trying to read a character. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Please be sure to check out the, uh, the description where I'm gonna have links for the C programming crash course, which would be great for you guys for a review after this, or um, if you're trying to prepare for an interview or a job, or you just you just like spending money and helping content creators, go check that out for me guys, really appreciate it. And definitely don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.